Welcome to the sixth episode of our series, Cost Management, How to Build Your Financial Model. Today is the first part of our topic, Financial Planning with Scenario and Sensitivity Analysis. As usual, our series we will discuss the theoretical concept, then try to show how to apply it in practice. So first, we will show you the theoretical concept, then how to use it in practice with practical cases. Let us first discuss what are the common scenario modeling methods and what are its most common uses. Let's quickly check out a good article published on AFP Association for Financial Professional. It's a featured article by Brooke Ballinger. Five Scenario Modeling Methods for Better Forecasting The article discussed the difference between scenarios, sensitivities, and what-if analysis. Also, the article discussed the technical methods of scenario analysis in Excel, such as the manual scenario selection. The Scenario Manager, Data Tables, Goal Seek, and the Monte Carlo Simulation. I'd recommend you read this article. Now, let's discuss how to apply the scenario modeling in practice. Let us start with the goal seek function. In this example, the current EPIT, EBIT, or the earning before interest and tax, is 1,260,000 euros. And our company is seeking a future EBIT of 2 million euros by increasing the sales price only. As you see in cell D7, the contribution margin equal the gross sales minus the total variable costs, and the EBIT equal the contribution minus total fixed costs. On the Data tab, in the Data Tools group, click What If Analysis, and then click Goal Seek. In the set cell box, enter the reference for the cell that contains the formula that you want to resolve. In our example, this reference is cell D10 or EBIT. In the to value box, type 2 million, and in the by changing cell box, enter the reference for the cell that contains the sales price value that we want to increase. This reference is cell I4, then don't forget to press OK. As you see, the gold seek runs and produces the 2 million by changing the sales price. Now let's try another way by using a keyboard shortcut. Let's suppose the company want to increase the contribution margin to be 38%. We need to increase the CS ratio, or the contribution ratio in cell E7, to be 38%, by changing the variable cost per unit in cell L4. Press the following keyboard shortcut. Press Alt A W and G. In the set cell box, enter the reference for the cell E7. In the to value box, type 38%. In the by changing cell box, enter the reference for the cell that contains the variable cost cell L4. Then press OK. As you see now it's working. Also, you can use the quick access toolbar same as I do. On the data tab, in the data tools group, click what if analysis, and then right click on goal seek. Then click add to quick access toolbar. Now you have the goal seek icon on your quick access toolbar. Now, let us discuss the Scenario Manager. As Asif Masani stated in his article, how can scenario planning help FB and A? Scenario planning is the practice of establishing different possibilities based on various sets of assumptions. Also, Asif Masani stated that finance can typically build three basic scenarios. The best case, the base case, and the worst case. 
Let's apply these three basic scenarios in a practical example. A simple short example about the discounted cash flow or DCF. In the following example, we need to build three basic scenarios of discounted cash flow. The base or the current scenario is it shown based on sales growth rate of 7% and require additional investment of $213,000 in the first year. Then increase to $226,000 in the second year, then $240 and $254 in the third and fourth years. On the Data tab, click What If Analysis, and then Scenario Manager. Click Add, and in the Scenario Name Type Base, that represent our current case scenario. In the Changing Cells select B5 the current growth rate, then hold the control key and select cell C15 to F15, the additional investment that we want to change in each scenario. Press OK and don't change any cell, as it will be our current or base case, then press OK. Again, click Add, in the scenario name type Best, which will be our second scenario. Keep the changing cells as it is, then click OK. Change the growth rate to 9%, and additional investment will be 235 for the first two years, then 250 and 260 in the third and fourth years. Press OK. Click Add again, in the scenario name type Worst, and keep the changing cells as it is, then click OK. Decrease the growth rate to 6%, an additional investment will be 200 for the first two years, then 240 and 254 in the third and fourth years. Press OK. Now you have three scenarios, and you can show each scenario as you see. You can also delete, edit, and merge scenarios. Keep the base scenario, and click Summary to make a summary table, then select cell C19 in the result cells, then press OK. But as you see it will be displayed based on reference cells not the cell's name. Let's delete this summary and define name to each cell. Changing and result cells. Select cell A4 to be 6, from formula tab click on create from selection, select from left column then press OK. You can also define name by selecting cell and type the name on the cell reference box. I will define names for cells C15 to F15, for example a short name of additional investment 1, 2, and so on. For cell C19 I will define name DCF. Now from Scenario Manager, click Summary to make a summary table, then select cell C19 in the result cells and press OK. Now as you see it will be displayed based on the cells defined names. You can also summary as a pivot table. But as Anders advised in his article, never plan without preparing multiple scenarios. The question now, from the previous examples of Goal Seek and Excel Scenario Manager, do you think that they provide agile multiple scenarios? I think not. Again, as Anders advised in his article, of course, like the original plan, neither the best nor the worst case scenarios are going to happen. They are tools for improvement. They give planners an opportunity to test their first pass assumptions, reflect on the original forecast, and identify the critical drivers and milestones that will make or break the company on its journey. Also, by the end of his article, Andres asked important questions. What is your tried and trusted method of producing multiple forecast scenarios?
In the following example, I will try to build an agile multiple scenario analysis, also trying to present it in a good way as possible to be best communicated to stakeholders. But for the tutorial and training purposes, it will be just a simple not a complicated case as the ones that are built in practice. In the following example I am using five scenarios, from optimistic to pessimistic or worst scenario. Our current scenario as it shown on the here below table, cell D12 to P15. In cell O13 the total sold quantity of 9 products, then in raw 14 the price of each product, and in P14 the weighted average price using the Excel function of some products. For better understanding of this function, and the different uses of it, you can watch our episodes number 4 and 5 in our series about Excel for FPNA and cost management. Also, in raw 15 the current variable cost scenario of each product then the weighted average of total variable cost per unit sold. Again, by using the sum product function. Finally on raw 17 is the CS ratio or contribution margin, followed by the icon sets of conditional formatting. Also, for applying the dynamic shapes and formatting effects, you can watch our first series of Excel for FPNA and cost management. In raw number 2 we built an optimistic scenario, with sales growth rate 10%, which mean the sales price will increase by 10%, but with no increase in the sales quantity, and decreasing the variable cost per unit by 3%. As you see the dynamic shapes on the left summarize the five scenarios, for better communication to the scenario's reader. Also, all cells from K2 to M6 are linked to the current scenario as you see, by adding or deduct the percentage of decrease or increase. In cell B2 we are using a dynamic drop-down list, to apply this from data tab, data validation, then allow list. On the source select cells, I2 to I6 to be your reference. But how I can change each the summarized data on the lift based on each scenario from the drop-down list. In this example, I am using the XLOOKUP function, in cell D3 for quantity, C4 for price, C5 for variable cost per unit. Let's delete data from cell C4 to show you how to use the XLOOKUP function. In cell C4 type equal X lookup and select cell B2 comma, then cell I2 to I6 for the name of the five scenarios. Then comma and select cell L2 to L6 for the five scenario prices. Finally, comma 0 and press enter. As you see every time you select scenario from the drop down list, the summarized data will be changed to produce new scenario. But what about the effect of other variables? What about the complicated scenarios of multiple variables? For example, and as James Rimmer advised on of his sessions, scenario planning and analysis is key. Can we build a dynamic scenario based on multiple variables? For example, different inflation levels. Also, multiple pricing scenario analysis and cost reduction scenarios. What are other areas to look at in your scenario? In the next episodes, we'll discuss applying scenario planning and sensitivity through recession and inflation. Also, making a multiple variable DCF sensitivity analysis and a lot of very important topics related to scenarios, sensitivity, and solver. Till this time, I would recommend you to watch this important tutorial by Mentatrice. Excel data tables, easy what-if analysis for multiple variables. See you.